Do you think that homosexuality is a choice, Brad? A choice? Yeah. Do people choose to be gay or don't they? We've all got free will. So yeah, I guess it's totally a choice. Right. A film screening this weekend in Redwood City at the CityQuest Film Festival tackles some taboo topics in a very unconventional manner. The film is called Groupers, and for more on the movie, we're joined now by the writer and director of Groupers, Anderson Cowan. Thanks so much for coming on, Anderson. We appreciate it. Congratulations on the film. Um, so it, we, we see in the opening sequence, the, the film is a, about a graduate student who kidnaps two homophobic high school bullies all as part of an experiment. So uh, help us understand, what, what is her motivation? Yeah, th thanks for having me on, Alex. Sure. Um, Meg is her name, and she's, uh, she's, she's been hearing from her little brother, who's in high school, that these two uh, bullies have been uh, torturing her little brother for years. So she decides, you know what, enough's enough. I'm going to grab these two guys, and I'm going to ultimately make them prove that their theory is uh, real, uh, that it's actually true, that she's going to have them do an experiment on themselves and prove that homosexuality is actually a choice by being gay for each other. All right, and so by, by the time people finish <laughs> watching the movie, obviously without giving too much away, which I know you don't want to do, but what, what, is, what is the message right. that, that you're hoping people take away from this film at the end? Um, just how absurd it is that people still continue to think that uh, people choose to be gay and that it's not like something that's uh, wired into your brain when you're born. I always thought that it was just absurd and crazy when I hear people talk about that, and that's kind of where the germ of the idea came from. Uh, just the, the amount of bigotry and, and homophobia that continues today with all of our, our knowledge and information, uh, it's just it's, it's astounding. So I decided to make an absurd comedy that explores those ideas, and I, I thought, what would be better than having two homophobic guys have to uh, be gay for each other? Then, so that's what I did. And, and so obviously, you know, you just alluded to it there. That you you started off with this notion, uh, and, and that's where sort of the idea grew for you. Um, it, who else has sort of helped you, you know, along the way with this project and sort of, uh, you know, bringing this idea to the big screen? I, I'm fortunate enough, I do a couple of uh, weekly shows. Uh, you can find them on iTunes, After Disaster, and The Film Vault, where primarily I talk about movies. Uh, that's my main gig. I talk about movies. I review movies, essentially, every, every single week okay. on uh, The Film Vault. And uh, we, 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 it's like a writer's room, almost. We, we're bouncing ideas around, and, uh, and somebody came up with the idea. We were talking about Chinese finger traps, and like what oh, yeah. happened to Chinese finger traps. And then, <laughs> and then, and then the conversation uh, evolved. Okay. And, All right, so and we decided. We decided. Like, what if, what if two hom homophobes were uh, forced to to deal with a, 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 a Chinese finger trap? Essentially, I'll leave it at that. Fair enough. Okay, uh, I think folks are going to have to see the <laughs> see enough. the film to uh, to uh, <laughs> figure out exactly what they that are. Means. All right. Um, so you know, I know you worked on the show Love Line, the radio show Love Line, uh, yeah. back in the day. Yeah, yeah. That I know a lot of us used to listen to with Dr. Drew. Uh, you were on the show for, for yeah. almost two decades. So you know, what was yeah. was it something about that experience that kind of kind of led to, to what we're seeing on the screen here with with this film? Abs absolutely, Alex. Yeah, I, I, tens of thousands of calls I listened to over those like 17 years working with Dr. Drew, and I got to be in a front row center watching Drew deal with uh, what was going on with the kids out there with the relationships and. Uh, bullying and sexuality. So, sure. absolutely, there's no way I can write anything without uh, drawing from my experience on Loveline and Dr. Drew. All right, and so a lot of folks have already seen the movie, and, and tell me what kind of feedback you're getting so far. You know what? I, I four walled it, which is like I did private screenings uh, all over the country last year uh, for my own audience for those shows that I talked yeah. about. And uh, I got to tell you, San, Fr San Francisco was by far the most receptive audience. They absolutely loved it. And I was concerned because I'm not gay myself and there's a lot of gay themes. Mm -hmm. And uh, San Francisco and my gay producer as well uh, completely signed off on it. And they, they, and they really uh, seem to be enjoying it. So, That's so far, so good. Feel good for you. Wonderful. Okay, so uh, yeah. the important stuff. If people want to see the movie, uh, tell, uh, tell us where they, yes. can, uh, th where they can see groupers. The first public screening will be tomorrow night at the Century 20 in Redwood City at 9.15. And then it's playing at the big, beautiful Opera House, the uh, California nice. Theater, 
on Sunday at uh, 5 p.m. 5 p.m. So that's the one that I really want to see people at because it's beautiful and giant, it's giant in the old Fox Theater. And then Century 20 next Friday at 9:30 uh, out in Century City, uh, Redwood City again. All right, so plenty of Century opportunities. City. Century City, Century Theaters. Yeah. Yes. All right, we got you. All right, that's Anderson Cowan, uh, director of the film Groupers, that is uh, premiering at yes. Cinequest Film Festival. Thanks so much for coming on. Nice chatting. Thanks for having me, guys.